Hey, 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 what's going on, guys? Today we're going to dive into episode 1B of Let's Learn Kill 'em All. The song is Hit the Lights, and we're going to be looking at all three solo sections. So, check it out. The first solo of the song begins right after the first chorus. And it's a quick one, it's a real quick solo over the main riff, so it's in A minor, and it follows a, a pentatonic pattern, a very fast pentatonic pattern. It goes like this. Okay, so like I was saying, it goes through a, an A minor pentatonic pattern, but very, very quickly. It's sort of like a, like a reminiscent of a Chuck Berry, a classic rock and roll type of thing, right? Kind of like that, kind of like that. Right? But we're adding this extra pull-off into there, which is very common of... Uh, so it reminds me a lot of Led Zeppelin would do this kind of thing. Led Zeppelin, Metallica, Iron Maiden, all the big rock bands that you listen to. Um, especially classic rock acts. I mean, this is the kind of thing that they're... Uh, you got to have it in your arsenal if you're going to play classic rock music or any kind of heavy metal in general, right? So taking it real slow, let's take a look at the, uh, at the part. So we have our bend on the G string all the way at the 19th fret. Okay, so G string, 19th fret whole step bend well obviously without that kind of thing but yeah then we're going to hop up to the 17th fret of the e so full step bend 19th g 17th of the high e string next we need to hit a pull off from the 20th fret of the b string to the 15th fret of the b string so we're on and that's the whole pattern, right? And then you just rock it. Increase the speed gradually, of course. And then you rock the wah on a little bit. Cool, so that's uh, that's the basic idea behind it. Now, we have some other stuff coming in after that too. So, after we do this part. So immediately following that section, after doing the quick part, we have another pull-off that happens on the high E string, the 18th fret to the 15th fret. Right, right, so it goes like that. And then you do it again, but a slightly shorter version. Okay. Pull off, pull off, pull off. Another important thing to note about this section is the way that the pick attacks the strings and the way that you use your pick. Your picking is crucial on something like this. And also the fingering that you're using as well. So on the first bend, I'm using my middle finger to do that whole step, okay? My pointer's taking control of the 17th fret. And my ring finger is taking control of the 20th fret, okay? Now, in terms of the right hand with the picking, the picking's the easiest part. And this is something that a lot of people get stuck on here. They're like, Mike, I can't move fast enough. I can't do this or that. Well, this is the secret to that. Make the right hand as easy as possible, and you won't have to worry about anything, right? Well, you'll probably have to worry about something, but I don't worry about it. So here it is. So I'm going to show you exactly how to get through this, how to blast through this lick, no problem. You ready? So we have a downstroke on the bend, an upstroke on the high E string, and a downstroke on the B string with that last pull-off. So we're going to be going like this. Now, if you just take your right hand during that situation, just take the right hand and go like this. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. That's all you're doing. 
Right? It's that simple. Just go down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. You don't have to worry about anything at that point. Just connect it with the other hand. Right? Right? And everything becomes so much easier. Your right hand can be nice and relaxed while your left hand rips. Okay? Coming out of that part, we have this little... Just another... Another pentatonic thing, right? Except here, you're not going all the way up to the A string after the bend. You're going... Then pull off from 19 to 17 on the G. 19 on the D string. Back up to the 17th. So... So that ending part is like this. So just a couple pull-offs while picking. Down, down, up. Down, down, up, down, down, up. All right. Okay, so solo number two comes after the second chorus and it follows basically the same kind of principle as the first one fast and hectic right but this time we're doing some uh you know some more like hectic bends coming in on it so here's the full speed solo okay so you know still hectic but um you know there is rhyme and reason to it it definitely has a, a specific pattern that you have to play right very specific pattern and the, the picking is pretty accurate you know a lot of 16th note picking that's that's a characteristic of this entire solo is a lot of 16th notes happening so it starts off with these sort of hectic bends they sound like he's just kind of ripping on it but there is a rhythm to it you actually have to give five of these first bends three four five okay one two three four five and then after that you go to the G string once then you go, so one, two, three, four, five, one. So if you can think of it like this, five on the B, one on the G, two on the B, one on the G, one on the B. So if we, if we look at that as a sequence, five, one, two, one, one. Okay? Three, four, five. Right. Okay, so the ending of that solo goes like this. So, not too crazy of a sequence. It's all in the same pentatonic box area. Um, but we go like this. We start with two pull-offs. Right, and then back, so we go with a double pick on the 17th. Another pull off on the B string, so pull off and then a little string transition there. So Let me play that slow for you. Okay, so now we're gonna hop into the very ending solo. Now this is the big one. This is the big one. This is about, I'd say it's a little over a minute of soloing. So if you can learn this whole thing, you give yourself a pat on the back because you deserve it. Anyway, let's get into it. So it comes out of the other riff in the song, right? So we're used to being in uh, in A minor pentatonic, but this time they shift the whole thing up to B minor, right? Just to mess with our heads. So the first part is very reminiscent of the earlier solo. 
It's on a pentatonic, Chuck Berry, Led Zeppelin style kind of thing happening here, right? Just ripping at the ninth and the seventh fret. And remember, make the picking easy. If you don't make the picking easy, you're going to suffer endlessly. Okay? Toiling away with your bad picking. You don't want to do that. Okay, we want good picking, right? Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Just like that. Okay? And nice and easy, nice and even, too. The next part is a series of, series of pull-offs, right? So we're going from the 10th to the 7th on the high E string to the 9th and the 7th. 9th dipping down to the 9th on the B string. And then to the ninth again. So that this will be like this. Right? So you do this once. Then the second time. You know, it definitely has, uh, has some swing to it, honestly. But the song's going so fast, you'd, you'd never notice that, right? So we have... There you go. Okay, so the next uh, the next section follows it within the same area, right? So still in that root position B minor pentatonic pattern. So the next section goes like this. Okay, and then we scale up to the next part. So here we're sliding into the seventh fret of the low E string. You know, kind of, you know, constantly keeping this moving. Except for this first part, we're going down, down, up, 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 down, down, up. That's an easy way to kind of keep the picking under control so that it doesn't seem too chaotic. Right? And that bend, always overemphasize the bends with this, with uh, for in this song in particular, for some reason, the bends are always slightly sharp for some reason. Right? So let's check that out. So we start up here. So it starts out with a bend at the 21st fret of the G. Whole step bend to the 19th fret of the B string. Right? And just do that three times. Then we have a pull off on the 22nd down to the 19th, pull off, and then we dig our pinky up to the 20, 24th fret. If you don't have a 24 fret guitar, you can play this over in this area at the 17th fret of the B. Right? Or you go. Right? Coming out of that, coming out of this, So it's kind of coming in with like a little slidey thing. Nice tasty slide coming in there. 16th to the 18th fret. And then grabbing the 17th with the middle finger. So ring, middle. Like that. And then here with our... It's our first buck and bronco moment, right? It's like you're on an out-of-control horse, right? You can't make it stop going that way. I don't know, that's what that reminds me of, but yeah. And then a quick little... 
right at the last second, right? To catch the last part of the riff. The solo honestly goes really well with the riff in the background. Um, especially that last part. Huh? Hitting right along with the rest of the band as it's happening, right? Okay, so here comes the really high bend in the solo. More fast stuff, just tons of 16th note picking and pull-offs galore, right? But here we're back in this uh, root position B. B minor pentatonic scale. So we're hitting this high 22nd fret. And we're leading into the next section with that, so... So coming out of this part, so that ending part is very interesting. So we're going through this whole thing. We have a little chromatic section with the A string, 19th fret, 19, 17, 18, 19. Then we scale back. You know, but of course, that's key with this song, is, is the constant 16th note picking going. And once again, an overstated bend, right? That one's actually a step and a half each time, I'd say. So... Coming out of that, we have even more fast stuff, right? Even more fast stuff. All right, so that section is actually, this is probably one of the easier parts because it just stays on the same thing the entire time. It just, this is just one of those things where you have to just keep repeating, you're repeatedly practicing it over and over and over and over again. So here's what I'm talking about. So we're going, on the 17th fret of the E, 14th of the E, 12, but like this, right? And then eventually it starts It starts to include the open E string with the pull-off as well, right? So the next section, we have even more bluesy stuff going on here. We have a little uh, section that sounds like this. Okay, so that part starts out with a nice ninth fret bend on the G and the B. Right, just like that. <laughs> little wah, little wah in there. Right, so you got... And then 7 9 coming on the G, G to the D, to the root note. And then here we have this little. And we play that lick 12 14, 14, pull off. And then we have a hammer on the pull-off. Then once we come to the G string, we have a bend at the 16th fret, a full step. To the 14, 17. It's like an F sharp minor blues in B minor. And they definitely didn't know they were doing that. They just thought it sounded cool, I guarantee it. So once again, it's kind of a motif, right? This is the same as that. But it's not quite as cool as that Buck and Bronco part, right? But here. So that whole riff played like this.
cool. So then we're coming into the end of the uh, B minor section. Another high, really high 22nd fret bend. And we come in with this. That leads it off. 20th to the 17th. And then we stop, we do a little pit stop on the G. That's actually a really helpful thing when you're learning a solo like this, where it has a lot of just pentatonic, really fast pentatonic stuff, is you look for where they stop on the string. When they take a, take a little break on a string, that's a good place. So here, right? So you're ripping from the E string. And on the G, you're stopping for a double, triple pick kind of thing, right? 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 There's your pit stop. Then we go back down. So this is kind of more chaotic stuff. You just keep the pick moving as you move through the pattern. And, you know, once you get it to a certain speed, it'll, it'll sound good. So we have... That's kind of what's happening at the end there, which then leads into the next part. Okay, so we have this. Oops. So then we have this. This is sort of like, I, I, I think of it as like the Randy Rhodes part, right? It's a chromatic, it's almost like a diminished kind of arpeggio going up chromatically or almost chromatically. There's one spot where it's not, but I'll show you where that is. So it goes like this. Stops up, so you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frets doing the same thing. And on the seventh, you stop right there. So after that, we go to the seventeenth fret of the high E string. So seventeen, fourteen, sixteen, fourteen. This next section goes back to the key of A minor, okay? So A minor pentatonic, once again. Now this time we're kind of coming in with this, uh, this, this lick right here. Right? So it's another one of those repetitive kind of things where you have a uh, bending at the 19th fret of the G string going to the 17th of the B, pull off from 20 to 17, but then you're hitting that 19th fret, right? So that's got some swing to it too, right? So it's, it's almost like a Dorian type of blues. It's a Dorian mode. Then you pull off with the pinky at the 22nd. Then do the pull off at 20, 19. So 22, 20, 19. 22, 20, 19. Right? And then we end it with that nice big fat double bend on the 20th fret of the high E string. Now the very last section of the song pretty much continues on with the theme that was going on before. More scale stuff. All right, so just hopping down the pentatonic scales and taking those breaks. Remember where the breaks are, right? Right. 
Okay, and then we scale kind of back up that. So we're on the 15th to the 17th of the E string, sliding up, then a pull off, or not a pull off, a hammer on, I'm sorry. So we go hammer, slide, and we end up at the 19th fret. That's another thing too, it's really helpful when you're learning these kind of solos that have so many notes in it to break up all the individual notes into little blips, right? So I see this as one thing, right? One continuous thing. And then we pause there. So that's what happens right there as it goes. Just like that. But it doesn't stop there. We don't get a break. So that last section repeats over the blues lick here. Right? So we're going, we're kind of, it's, it's kind of a spaz out with the other chords. So I mentioned the spaz out in the first part. Check out the first part if you don't know about the spaz out, but it's basically... So the idea here is to keep the pick moving like this. I know that's kind of annoying when I'm not playing notes. When I am playing notes, listen, ready? And once again, just follow the pattern and kind of dip down to where you gotta go. So we're, I'm coming up to the peak of the high E string. That's the peak of the high E string. Then I'm coming back down to the valley on the D string and kind of doing a little middle stuff. So. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope all that was helpful for you. Um, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and ring the notification bell, and do all that good stuff. Um, also, go to my website, romanelvamusic.com, for more cool stuff. If you want to book a lesson with me, or even buy some stuff from my store, you can even, there's a donation button, you can donate to the channel so I can keep making this stuff. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. I'll see you guys next time.